Hello, mortals, and welcome to the first episode of season two of Dice X Machina here on Saving Throw Show. We are joined with some familiar faces and a couple of brand new faces to the show. So before we begin, we have some notes to get into, but I want to have all of our players uh, say hello. So we will start with our, our veteran players from the previous season. Go ahead and just say your name, say who you're playing, and if, if you have a god affiliation, say who that is. Uh, if you aren't sure of that yet, it's okay. Hold off, and we'll, we'll figure that out at some point, and story goes on. Uh, but we'll worry about getting into like the nitty-gritty of character description and stuff like that so you get into the actual story. But for now, let's start with Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lysandros, who is uh, the, the heavily in debt... Uh, a satyr rogue who uh, it has a, a sort of iffy relationship with Phoenix most of the time, but he's, you know, a trickster. So uh, it's a pretty natural connection going on there. All right, and then we'll move on over to Ashlyn. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be back. Uh, I'm Ashlyn, and I play Callista. She is a Leonin fighter. Um, I guess she's she's an iconoclast now because she serves no god, and she does not care for the gods whatsoever, and she is not here to play around with any of the gods. So that's that's Callista. She's she's a what you see is what you get. She is not here for. Uh, to be nice and accommodating. She is here to be upfront and give you give you what you see. So yes, Callista, hello. <laughs> hello, and then we will go over to the first of our brand new cast members. Let's say hello to Curious Joy. Hello, I am Joy and I'm playing Mare Fine, who is a bard uh, satire and she is, um, trying to think of the best way to do that because since jordan was like he's a trick he's a trickster i was like yeah so is mine kind of but <laughs> <laughs> i was like very charismatic and will definitely try and charm her way into getting what she wants <laughs> this will be a and... fun combo <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> so, <excited. laughs> so many satyrs so little time <laughs> and then uh last but not least of course say hello to our friend cb cb welcome to the show Hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, a Critical Bard across all social media channels. Uh, today, I'm playing Zindar, who is a half Gorgon artificer wizard. There's, there's a little bit of wizard in there. Uh, and he is devoted to Farika, uh, goddess of affliction and medicine and all that jazz. Uh, well, I, and I'm I hope very excited. I hope you don't expect us to roll our R's when we say that name because I am incapable. Have to. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, he barely does too, but sometimes <laughs> it, it just slips out every now and then. Right. It can be fun when it happens. <laughs> um, I had a thought and then, oh, I wanted to point out, we pointed out that, that uh, is it, sorry, it's not Zindar? Zindar, yeah. yes. Zindar is a half Gorgon, which is a not, Technically, an official character designation in the story, but however, uh, Omega had a really fun idea for this character, and I am the kind of DM. I think that you should always be able to go with a player's idea if it can work for your story, and I personally think that it makes a lot of sense for there to be Gorgon-like or Gorgon part or Gorgon player characters in Theros, and so we had a lot of fun uh, figuring out how to exactly how to homebrew that, and so I'm a big supporter of the Tasha's Guide to Every, Tasha's College of Everything uh, approach to lineages and customizing it. So uh, I think we'll have a lot of fun with that. So I just want to point that out as a, to other DMs out there, if your players have cool ideas, be willing to yes and them if you can. And that's a, that's a great example of a time where like, I personally would love to play a Gorgon, so I think I might steal the thing we did for my own character <laughs> in the future. <laughs> so before we begin the show tonight, we have a few announcements that I have to get out of the way as, as the top of the show, and then we'll get right on into it. Uh, first of all, we are aiming for a goal of $250 an episode. Uh, this hitting this goal allows us to, to pay to our to pay more to our amazing cast and we keep content like this on the air at Saving Throw, keep Saving Throw alive as a channel. Even if you can't afford to hit us back or can't afford, afford to, to back us 
with money, please spread the word and share the stream with friends and family and bring audiences <laughs> to us. A little bit helps here and there, keeps us going. We are an indie channel and we are funded entirely by our audience. Uh, and, and well, and a little bit of sponsorships we'll get to in a second uh, <laughs> as a bonus incentive. If but we don't have that corporate money coming in, uh, if we do hit 250 tonight, we will actually unlock a special live pool from an active Magic the Gathering deck from the arena, and then I will use one of the cards or more in the adventure next week. So you have a chance right there to to play the role of the fates in some way and help draw the adventure for next week. Uh, a tip of $15 will allow you to send us a message, which we'll read live on the air. We call a message from the god or a revel, but just send us a little note and we will we'll make time in the show to read those off. And we want to go ahead and thank our season sponsors, Roll20 and Hero Forge, for supporting us. And we have a special shout out to tonight's episode sponsor, Noble Knight Games. Um, we also have a unique partnership with Die Hard Dice. You can save 10% at Die Hard Dice by using the code Saving Throw Show and check out at your checkout and use command uh, DH Dice in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Omega's dice set right there and get 10% off of that. So you're double helping friends. You're helping the cast and you're helping the show, which is fantastic and the channel. And for everyone watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Do us a solid and leave us a like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell, the whole nine yards. It really helps the <laughs> show and the channel. And last but not least, we know things are in flux right now with Twitch. We as a channel support and respect those who chose to participate in the day off of Twitch protests that they felt like that was the right thing to do for the situation. We made a decision as a cast to not directly take part in that. We felt that it was more important for us to be visible and have our voices be out there on, on the channel, on the stream, on the, on the, the, out there. We don't want to silence ourselves. Uh, and so we do encourage you to be an active viewer and ensure this platform does the right thing for creators who are continually having to fend off attacks, both technological and psychological. We stand with marginalized creators. A lot of us are marginalized creators right here. And so now in the future, we stand with, with them, others and ourselves. We want this platform to recognize its complicitness in this crime being perpetrated by scum that are invading people's spaces. Uh, to further our support, for every dollar raised after 250, the channel will donate a portion to BIPOC and other marginalized streamers in our RPG community. And I also have chosen with Dom to donate my part of the show tonight to that as well. Uh, and as an, that's actually end of the show reminders. So that is all of our top of the show stuff out of the way. So we just wanted to address that. Uh, understand people make choices they have to do. Everyone has to do what's right for them, what's comfortable for them. But we have made the choice that we have made. Uh, with that out of the way, you guys, are you ready to dive back into Theros? I am frightened. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. We begin this season. Oh, and I should say this, by the way, it's been a good six months since most of us have played these characters or this story. And... It's been a heck of a six months. There's been a lot going on in all of our personal lives and in the world, in case you haven't noticed, there's some stuff happening. So if we like have a little continuity gap here or there, or if we have forgotten something in the six months since we last played, please be kind. We, we are trying our best to tell a great story. Uh, consider this like saved by the bell rules. Sometimes Tori shows up and Tori leaves and we don't know what's happening and Kelly and, and, and the Jesse come back. So just let's put that out there. Please, it doesn't hurt to be kind. And uh, I mean, yeah. three of us did a whole other season of a different show, also <laughs> in Pharaohs, with like yeah. a sort of similar cat. So like, whew, it's yeah. hard to keep track of. Things are gonna get. Right. I'm, I'm just playing Sophia, right? Like I'm not DMing time. So I'm just gonna play well, Sophia. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> okay, and she's and still a, a god's uh, assistant. All right, cool. Something um, about cats. <laughs> yeah, cats are cats are here. We have cat. Well, you're playing a cat. We also yeah. Um, That's right. Yeah. So. There we go. Uh, Magical Mr. Mistopheles, we're good. We have all the cats. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we begin much where we left off. We begin in the coastal city of Neo Lantern, which uh, distinctively has the common sight of Heliod worshippers across the city uh, who stop in the evening to perform a small gesture of blessing to the departing sun as it slowly sets over the horizon. Uh, the Sunset City, as it is often referred to outsiders uh, outside of its earshots of the more devout citizens, takes great care in observing their duty to see the departing sun god off with respect for fear that he may strike them down in hubris again, a fate that once befell many of their ancestors. 
So we are in that moment, and we are joined once again by a pair of travelers who have, over the last several months, hopefully <laughs> become better friends, gotten to know each other. Uh, they have lost two of their adventuring party. Uh, one member, Claw, went off to continue his business of running tours for random sightseers around the countryside of Theros, perhaps eventually go back and claim the random Minotaur kingdom that he earned through a strange trial involving fitting inside a pot. Uh, and meanwhile, their friend D has, has strangely absconded off into yet another scam of hers. And uh, who knows what's going to happen with her. But let's open with Lysandros and Callie. It's been a few months. I would think it's been a bit of a slow time. I don't know. I know Callie probably feels like she's earned a bit of a vacation after spending a long time in service of a death god. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Kelly is so happy. I think she's probably increased the amount of food she eats now that it doesn't talk to her randomly. Um, so she's definitely enjoyed eating a lot more food, especially her fish. What is uh, what's Callie get up to on like a given day? Right now you're in Neil Anton. You you've had your little adventure with your group. You went over to an island. You dealt with some witches and and some and you you set a, a Nyxborn free and and broke a musical. Uh, we did do that. That's right. Yeah, I'd say that's been about that's been about probably about six months since that happened. So, what what is a, what's a day to day life for Callie? Uh, day to day for Callie right now is probably like, she still like travels around. Um, I don't know if she, if she would hang out with Lysandros, she would probably like tag along with Lysandros every once in a while. Cause she's not afraid of trouble. Um, she's probably like helping like anyone who comes into town. That's like in trouble with a God or like getting their business mixed up with a God. She's eager to like take up any of those like misdoings or deeds and try to help out with that. But day to day, she'll like wake up, maybe go to like the the bounty board because she still doesn't mind doing bounty hunting as long as it's not for a god. Um, okay. So yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll say that you, you've come to Neo Lantern on a bounty and it's a bounty that you are actually a little curious about because it describes a woman that seems familiar to you. Uh, someone who may has may maybe made a little bit of her work in professional wrestling or some sort of uh, <laughs> combat sport who maybe <laughs> has been known to abscond with the money that belongs to other people from time to time or fix fights in arenas and, and take off with the, with the fixed winnings. So you're curious because you haven't seen your friend in a while and you're wondering yeah. what happened to her. So maybe that's what brings you to Neil Anton and uh, Les Andros. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, yeah, totally. That's absolutely yeah. has to be D. I'm going to see what she's up to. I like that. We'll see where that goes. Uh, Les Andros, a lot happened to you. Sure did. Six months ago. You, you found out, so for the audience who doesn't know Lysandros or who doesn't remember, and for our new players who are new to the story, Lysandros is a, a trickster, as he said. He was fated at one point to be the richest and most successful king of satyrs, uh, a destiny that he chose not to follow. Uh, I believe the destiny was that you will die we the wealthiest satyr on Earth. Is that what, or on Theros? That was yes, the- Yes, I, I was going to die the wealthiest satyr who has ever lived on Theros. And Lysandros chose to eschew that fate by putting himself in the most debt he possibly could in the hopes that he would then live forever. Yes. Uh, he learned. And, to... <laughs> and it, it worked, worked for a while. <laughs> for over a hundred years, it worked. Uh, we don't have an exact set of time on that, but it worked. It worked for a very long time. And that's what we, what we learned. We did learn at the end of the season that this prophecy that Lysandros has been following was a lie perpetrated by none other than the god of tricks, tricks, tricks himself, Phoenix. It was a complete ruse in order to separate Lysandros from his community in order to send his half-brother <laughs> Xanathos, Xanagos, off on a quest that would eventually lead to him challenging the gods of Theros, which in the magic lore, he did. 
So Lysandro has now learned that he was being, he was a pawn in a elaborate chess game being played by the God of Deception in order to eventually move his way into usurping the role of Clothis, the God of Destiny. Because what better way to trick all of mortal life than being able to control the path and their destiny while you're at it. So Does he about uh, up to speed? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, Lysandros has been dealing with both coming to grips with his mortality in a very literal sense, and also uh, dealing with the fact that suddenly it's not an advantage to have massive crippling debts in like every town and all over Theros. So he's probably been uh, adjusting to life a little bit. And he's also, uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but he's a compulsive gambler, which uh, used to be like a big plus because you could rack up a lot of debts gambling. Um, but he has, now that he actually would like to like earn money instead of have IOUs to hand out to everybody, uh, he doesn't remember how to do it properly. <laughs> like his instincts are still to take the very bad bet and have things go bad. And that's still sort of a thrill. So yeah, there's been some adjustment. I, I would say so that Callie probably thinks like, oh yeah, I guess I do keep running into Lysandros decently often. But Lysandros has actually been keeping closer to Callie <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, I'm not necessarily safe all the time anymore. And it sure is nice to, you know, be within a, a sprinting distance of someone who is and more capable of fighting than he is. Yes. How often do you think that Lysandros shows up on Callie's bounty boards? How often is the description of a wiry satyr who owes somebody money? Oh, I mean, often, but under different names and with different images and stuff. So he, he he's at least good enough at not being caught after his uh, century of wandering Theros and trying not to you know, end up in jail for years of it, so. Now here's a question, because I think this is a detail you might not remember as much from last season, because it happened earlier in the season. Yes. Do you recall that you actually came into a obscene amount of money because of a of a seemingly fixed bet on D oh, that yes. ended up turning your ire from a certain mob boss whose empire essentially was based on the amount of money that she had to now give you because she was very much supposed to lose and i placed an enormous bet just to double down and she won by accident yeah. so yes trying to get that lack of debt off of my record was a, a big motivator last season yeah and you, and you didn't get it off your record so let me ask you what's lysander's done with that money has he has he tried to like find his creditors and pay them off one by one with it? Or is what's what's his situation with Lysandros and the money he's got? Oh, he's definitely trying to pay off his debts. So Lysandros has a book where he keeps track of every cent that he uh, is in debt to people and exactly who they are. Because his mentality about it is that if you were going to trick fate, you can't just half-ass it. You can't just say like, ah, I'll get up debt, it's a lot. You need to know exactly how much it is and you need to know who it's done to. And in his mind, you also have to be eventually willing to pay it back. It's not really debt, it's theft. So to follow his own rules that he has set up, he does now, he is trying to balance his books and uh, pay back debts whenever it becomes possible. But, you know, you got to have fun with it too. So there's certainly a lot of like gambling to... Uh, maybe pay it off before giving the money involved and things like that. Okay. We'll say that Lysandros is in Neolanton because there is something of a whale of a, of a creditor that he owes a little bit of money to. Um, and you are trying to track him down, but often the people who you owe the most money to aren't the most easy to find. There is a little bit of a underworld element to it. Not the underworld of Erebos, of course. Underworld is in the gambling dens run by the Gorgon, who's not your biggest fan. Uh, you have you have devastated a lot of her power as a as a mob and like owner as a as a mob mob owner as a as a mob <laughs> entrepreneur. Uh, you have you have not made her very happy because she has lost a lot of her footing and a lot of her power as a result of the gold that she had to give you, which prevented her from running her operation as smoothly as she would like to. So that is where you are right Sounds now. Sounds good. 
let us move over now to our new players, our new characters, our new faces, our friends that are that are also about in this city as the sun as the sun goes down. Uh, let us start first with Marafine. Yes. What do you, <laughs> what what would you say brings you to Neil What brings you to this this coastal city, this this sunny spot? Uh, uh so the from the last town I was in, I was I caught wind of some stuff that I have been looking for for a very long time, and they pointed me into this direction. So I'm curious to know if it if the item that I'm seeking is here. So okay. I, I'm just trying to find out if I'm in the right place. For the sake of our fan artist friends and also our other players at the table, why don't you go ahead and describe uh, Marafine for us? Uh, Marafine is a kind of a... I'm going to go ahead and say sarcastic, but also charismatic kind of person where... At the beginning, you don't think that you can trust her, but once you get to know her, you realize that she is really on your side and wants to do what's best for um, for the group. But also, uh, she is an adventurer, so <laughs> as soon as the time has come, she will leave <laughs> to continue on other things. So she's not very someone that sticks around for a long period of time, um, but. He's definitely trustworthy, even though it may not seem like it at first. Excellent. And for those who want to get a visual, I actually, uh, Dom, if you want to toss up the roll 20, uh, I actually just switched over. We, thanks to our friends at Hero Forge, we have created custom figure designs for each of our characters. Mm -hmm. And so I have tossed up the the mini that, that Dom and Joy collaborated on to create uh, Marafine's unique look. So that's what she looks like. And that is exciting. All right. Uh, so we have, we have a pair of satyrs, which is a, uh, you know, very satirical. All right. Uh, now, <laughs> last but not <laughs> so what what is uh what is Marafine up to exactly this evening? What is what is how is she getting down on a Saturday night, let's say? On a Saturday night. Uh, on a Saturday yes. night? Yes. yes. Wow. Yes. It is, <laughs> it is, it is, well, it is all that, right. She's leaving. No. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That is fair. That is fair. It does not make it all right. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> um as of now, she's just looking for the latest information to go around. So she's going from not necessarily like door to door, but she's she's seeing who's out and out and about and seeing if she can gather any information to make sure that she's in the right spot. So she's lurking in the shadows, not to be not to be discovered yet, just to make sure that the rumors that she heard in the past town were true. OK, I will say then that you have found your way into an Agora, which is kind of like the gathering area of a town in, in this region. Uh, so it's like a big open air marketplace. There are shops that are, some of them are closing for the night, but there is a tavern that is open that maybe there's some, some like folks of ill repute perhaps that might be there with information that might be useful to her. And so, yeah, we've got a. That's what I think. What you are up to does that sound? Does that sound about right to yeah, you? Yeah, that sounds right. Cool. And then, last but not least, we will go to our newest new face, uh, Zindar. Omega, what is what is Zindar up to? What brings Zindar to Neo Uh Zindar, first and foremost, is a uh, there's a curiosity to him because he wants to learn and understand a lot of the uh, the flora and different herbs and different things um, to create and and grow and and just just get that deep understanding of um, being a follower of Farika. Um, and and with his father actually being a medicine man, um, he's kind of following in his footsteps. Uh, so he typically goes from town to town um, trying to just, you know, just do what he can just because he, he he's good at his job. Um, he's not a healer. He's not necessarily someone who, um, um, well, that's not true. He is a healer, uh, but he wouldn't say it's like his only profession. Uh, he can do other things with those things that he creates as well. Uh, but specifically, he's a Neo Lantern because he heard um, just a couple of stuff, uh, a couple of things that caught, uh, that, that piqued his curiosity even more um, as he's also searching for different things I don't need to talk about right now. Uh, but yeah, so mo mostly he's just here to 
explore and and gather what he can while he's here and help however he can. Okay. Um, and uh, as far as uh, his uh, visual, uh, he seems to be a kind of dull, cool toned, uh, dark skinned individual. Uh, bright. The first thing you see is the bright green eyes that he has. They don't seem human for sure. Uh, and the kind of deeper foresty green hair that he currently has wrapped up in a ponytail um, affixed. Um, and you can swear one of those um, uh, um, locks, for lack of a better word, did just moved, maybe. And it might have been eyes uh, because his hair is actually snakes. Uh, but he tries to um, somewhat hide that. Not like it's not that serious, but he keeps it up when he can. Uh, he's wearing uh, a little bit different from the uh, the Hero Forge, uh, though there is a green, like Kaiden esque uh, garb. There is a brown um, piece of uh, armor, leather armor that's underneath, um, sleeveless. So he still has his sleeves showing. Um, he's wearing some simple pants, some some um, some sandals, period sandals. Uh, on his waist, you see a a, a bag. Um, affixed to that are three different flasks or vials with different contents inside. Um, on the other side, there's, there's always some kind of like toolkit that he's just able to grab whenever he needs it. Uh, and he also uh, always carries a uh, book on him. And sometimes that book is within the bag, even though it doesn't seem like it should fit in the bag. Uh, sometimes it's in there. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's him. Oh, and he also has goggles, which I didn't grab. I'll grab those soon. Um, he also has goggles on his head. Excellent. And I will say that because you are also searching for things in this town, it makes sense that you probably also would head to the Agora because that is where you're going to find people milling about who are asking, who, who are worth asking information about. Does that, does that make a lot of sense to you? You said the Agora? Agora, yeah, Agora. Agora. Okay, that's a A G O R A. I might be mispronouncing it. I I apologize. Well, I'm sure our resident right. Greek expert Jake will inform me if I have. Um, <laughs> and that's like I'm sorry, I missed. Is that like an inn or a tavern type of place? Uh, it's kind of like a big, almost like a town square. Um, and it's kind of like where a lot of the open merchant stalls and like things like that would be. And there's also there's a tavern on the side. Um, actually, I'll toss up kind of the general map of what one looks like on roll twenty, so you can kind of get an idea of it. Um, Looks like it's a little bit uh, fog of war now. So let me just reveal yeah. that. I have but this so is... many, <laughs> um, what are they called? So many uh, uh, monitors. None of them have roll 20 on it right now. Don't <laughs> worry. It's not, it's not that <laughs> big. We're not going to like do a combat here. So this is not a scene that you need to. No, it's have. just still. I thought I had it open yeah. and I didn't. It's just funny to me. <laughs> so let me just go ahead and pop. Why is this not letting me reveal this now? Dom. I can't make it reveal. <laughs> I don't know why this is happening. This is very strange. All right, uh, the first first glitch of the game, y'all. It happens. Um, it's like I'm I'm scanning it and I'm telling it to reveal the areas, but it's not doing it. Well, it might be ironically we are all because it's loading for me. Oh. Okay. Canonically, we are all standing in total darkness. Yes. yes. <laughs> Everyone turned off all. Well, while we try to figure that out. Um, oh. I exited ooh. the game on accident. Ah, everyone. We're uh, <laughs> off to a great start, y'all. Uh, <laughs> off to the best start, honestly. Okay, hang on. Let me try this. Let me try doing a hide. Callie, first, Callie leaves. And then a reveal. Yeah. Callie storms out. She's like, I'm not hunting. <laughs> I'm not hunting you or anybody. Why the heck won't it do this? This is very, am I in the wrong layer? Is that the problem? Ooh, maybe that's why. Nope, that's definitely not why. Because I just, okay. All right, y'all. I think I might have to give up on this. All right. You know, it, it happened. It's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. We tried. That's Theater all of the mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving up on the entire show, y'all. See you later. Ah! This is great. No. Bye. Um, all right. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be fun to figure out later. Uh, it maybe has something to do with the fact that Dom is running the channel, running is the creator and I'm the G I don't know. I don't know how it works. We'll figure it out later. All right. Uh, so who needs it? Uh, it's fine. All right. So <laughs> Callie, you are, uh, you're searching for a bounty. Let's go ahead and figure out who your 
uh, I don't have the answer to your question right now, Kelly. I will, I will, <laughs> I will okay. figure that out. I, I am sure I have it. Uh, I will look I it up too. in a moment. Um, I think it says that, but oh, I can't remember for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it does. So, all right. Sorry. Um, you are hunting somebody. Um, yeah, you have heard that D is is this. You you are in this town looking for someone who matches the description of your friend D. So you are probably also hanging out at the tavern because that is that is where D is known to be. And Lysandros, I imagine you are near Callie because Callie is known to keep you alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Lysandros is sort of doing the uh, the be at a good distance, but not necessarily there with, maybe when it starts drinking, it'll be like, Whoa, what's, what are the chances of us running into each other here? <laughs> yeah, and wow. Kelly, Kelly would just, just grab like, someone else's drink and like starts drinking. <laughs> I just, how does this keep happening? I really like, you just, I just can't, it's like for someone who is so unlucky, the luck you have of running into me anytime you have trouble is just. It is funny, isn't it? It's like one of those fate things, you know, that stuff where we're always talking about. <laughs> what can I say? It's just how things work out. And he grabs someone else who's looking away and uh, hands it here. Want some wine? Sure. And in fact, the wine that you grab belongs to another satyr who was sitting near you as she looked for information of her own. Uh, Marafine, what do you do when the satyr next to you grabs your glass of wine and tries to toast his friend with it? Joy. Oh, wait, sorry, what? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you, she fine. does not oh, notice. Uh, you're waiting, you're, yeah, yes, that answers that question. Of that, I am gonna make that. That is a, that is a, okay. That is a perception <laughs> check that is, that is auto fail. Uh, <laughs> okay, that was funny. <laughs> this, is that, this is that sense where it's like, how are you, Mr. Thompson? I think he's talking to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was definitely something my character would do. <laughs> yeah. So, Mary, what just happened then is that you were sitting and you were you were intently looking around for someone who might have information for you, and without you noticing it, the satyr next to you grabbed your wine goblet and held it up and toast with the with the with the Leona that he is with. They took my Cheers. wine glass. You took your wine glass. Yes. I was going to have you roll to see if you noticed it, but I think we could say that you didn't notice it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, I did not notice this. Um, uh, but luckily, as you are now without wine, suddenly uh, a young, a young man, a human man, uh, comes bumbling down the table and he's carrying trays of wine. He starts handing it out to everybody. And he says, I have toasts to give away. And he says, may all def may, may you all defy fate and destiny and have the greatest success in the ordeals ahead. To the players and GM, thank you for such a wonderful show. Uh, and that is a toast that was given to us by our friend Jake with Wherewithal. Uh, and then we also have a toast from another gentleman who hands down, puts another goblet of wine down on the table next to you. And he's, his name is Yanto7. And he says, the gods must be happy with me because Dice X Machina is back on my monitors. So glad to see the familiar faces and glad to meet the new ones. So excited to see where the satyrs and satyrly challenge go this season. Much love. I forgot Cheers. to get a drink before I did the show, so I'm just gonna go. Ha! Ah! Keep drinking this <laughs> until it's gone. Just steal, just steal Joy's drink. She will not notice. Um, <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, Marafine, you now have a drink in your hand, and now yeah. you're like, "Hang on a second. I had a drink. What happened?" Hey, to my there drink? it is. And now you have discovered it in the. Uh, did it? Did it finally unlock? Yep. Um, and now you discover it in the hands of of the satyr sitting next to you. Uh. So I noticed something a little odd in your hand. Uh, I think it belongs to somebody. I'm not exactly sure who, but uh, I'm going to need that back so I can return it to its rightful owner. Ha! Oh, ha! well, it is wonderful to see another satyr here. Uh, we are certainly underrepresented around these areas, uh, but uh, I, I mean, come on, don't we know that the... the the point of the revel is to share it. Everyone is friends here. 
tell you what, let's even things out. And he looks for someone else who's not paying attention, grabs and grabs their uh, glass of wine and then hands it to Marfine. Uh, Lysandros, make a sleight of hand check for me. Uh, by the way, just so you all know, you currently have seven rerolls as players, and I have two as a GM. Oh, boy. Noted. Ah, we learned, we learned the trick. The dynamic lighting was turned on, and I did not know that, so I was not trying to turn on a light. I was trying to turn off <laughs> Fog of War, and that's why I couldn't oh. <laughs> Now we know that if nice. I had made light sources, then we would have had lights. So I rolled a 22 on my sleight of hand check. I rolled a 13, I have plus nine, so. Good. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, you failed. No, I'm kidding. Okay, 22 what? succeeds for sure. Uh, and so, yeah, you were able to steal a different glass of wine, and you were able to do whatever you want with it. Yeah, uh, uh, Lysandros, as, like, just a habit for fun, like, when he's at bars, we'll just, like, switch people's wines and stuff and, and just, like, do little bits of sleight of hand thing because he gets bored if he's not, like, trying to do something like that. It's very true. <laughs> See, no harm, no foul. Now all of us have wine. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. So about that, um, this isn't exactly wine. It seems. It seems like it to be something a little different. That specific cup in your hand is the one that I'm going to need back. It's hmm. its owner very, very much needs it. <laughs> All right. Well, how about we uh, make a little bit of game game out of this, hmm? If you want your wine back, uh, let's just uh, you know a add a little bit of uh, uh, fun to it. And he wants to turn around and quickly make a illusion of another glass of wine that is exactly matching that one, and then turn back and do like a quick little like cup game thing, <laughs> switching the wine back and forth, and be like, if you pick the wine, it's yours, of course. Okay, look here. I tried to be nice, um, but I'm just going to need you to give me my wine glass back before, you know, it, things just get a little out of hand. I, I get you're trying to have fun here and everything, but I unfortunately was distracted for a hot minute, and I, <laughs> I'm i going to need to retrieve my stolen merchandise. All right, all right. I, I, I understand. And he goes... And both the wine glasses that were there poof away in uh, <laughs> illusory smoke. And he pulls the real one out and is like, fine, there you go. Enjoy. Don't mean to to uh, hurt anyone's uh, good time, of course. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that we solved this before anything got, you know, tasty. Well, of course, anything for a, a fellow wayward satyr. If you say so. And then she turnly turns around. <laughs> I'm going to turn my chair this way now. <laughs> uh, at this point, uh, Zendar, I think you have found your own way to the tavern, which is uh, kind of in the corner. Uh, it's a little bit, a little open air, not a whole mm -hmm. lot of like doors and, and windows and stuff in, in this region of it's pretty open air. It's pretty warm outside not, where we're, centuries before air conditioning exists as a concept. So you Valid. definitely, yeah, there's a, there's a cool ocean breeze coming in and you find this is where most of the, the folks of the town are. And you do get the occasional eyeball at your hair as you walk by, uh, mostly from like minotaurs who are tall enough to be able to get a better look at it. I think most of the humans tend to be a little below the eye level. So to them, it just looks like green locks pulled up. I'm also uh, about six two. Yeah, so you're really only getting eyeballs from from like a minotaur, maybe the occasional centaur. There's one roaming by. They don't tend to go all the way into the tavern. There's not a ton of room for them in there, but there's like a little bit of a bar set up that kind of leads to the outside, so their bodies can stick out the back. There's a their accessibility is very important to these taverners, so the tavern owners. They want to make sure everybody can enjoy a beverage and spend their money there. They're very happy to have that. Yeah, um, he will walk into the tavern, kind of like look around. Um, there's a level of, you know, when you know a newbie in town or a newbie just walked into an area, he definitely has that vibe. Uh, but, you know, he saddled, he kind of goes over to whoever is, um, at, you know, giving out the drinks of whatever. Um, and he, um, can I please um, have uh, one glass of the, the spicy grape juice? <laughs> oh, um, 
Sure, and it's a, it's a human woman who is working, and she kind of looks a little intimidated, not because of just because you're tall. You're a very tall figure, and I think for her, it's she doesn't usually see humans as tall as you are. And you, like you said, you have very piercing green eyes, so she's very mm -hmm. like, oh, um, and yeah, of course. Um, do you do you want do you want the white or the red or what? Oh yeah, there's different colors. Um, red probably. Uh, okay, that'll be and uh, that'll be one silver, please. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. And he reaches into his pack. You seem like kind of moving around stuff. Wait, I know it's right. Aha! And he pulls out his little uh, coin purse and, and hands a one silver. Uh, I think he gives one silver and one copper on top of it. Um, and he, there we go. Oh, of course. Thank you. And she's kind of calmed down now. She's fine. She's used to seeing lots of people coming around. So now that like the initial, whoa, you're a big one is out of the way. She's back to fine. She takes a, a goblet and there is a big kind of like terracotta pot behind her that is filled with a, you, you, which sorry, but you said red or did you say white? A red. Okay. She takes, she takes a red and she dips it in and she hands it to you and she kind of like nods to you and she says, have a good evening. And we're here. If you need any more drinks, we have lots could of I, them. Could I also have um, um, a goblet of water? Oh, oh, sure. And then she, same thing. She has another goblet and she has another big old like like bucket of like a big old terracotta pot full of water. Fills that up. She hands it to you as well. And I will take them. Thank you. And walk over to a corner. Um, not, I mean, I don't think he's going to be able to get away from everybody, but just kind of sit in the corner. Uh, and, you know, half people watch, half just kind of chill. He takes a sip of his drink. He doesn't like it. He pours some of the water in it to dilute it. He drinks it again. He doesn't like it. He pours more <laughs> of the water in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Now, Callie, I want you to make a perception check for me. All right. Let's see. I get an 18. All right, you notice out of the corner of your eye near this new stranger that has entered the tavern, just vaguely for a second, you feel like you notice the figure of a black cat kind of walk past him and almost in a way, like, like you see the cat, you see it go behind a chair and it doesn't come out from the other side of the chair. It just kind of like disappears behind the image like this. There's definitely not room behind this leg for the cat to hide. It's like its body just vanishes. And you, you had like that second, like, did I just see that happen? I, it, it happens so fast and you're not quite sure. Whoa. Do they allow, do they allow street cats in here? I mean, I don't, I don't know think they... anyone cares enough to stop them. <laughs> hmm. All right. Interesting. She's gonna like look over there, I guess. It, is it next to Zand Zand Zindar? Zindar? Yeah, yeah. Zindar. it kind of like went behind his chair and then disappeared. Well, then I guess she's gonna look over in Zindar's direction. Um, has she seen a uh, half half Gorgo? Before? No, she would not have. It's a very it's, they're they're not extremely common. I don't think you've even seen a Gorgon. I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> think you would have, but uh, you definitely haven't seen a half Gorgon. Or because, could we say a demigorgon? Uh, <laughs> all right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Get the cat away! All right. <laughs> um. Hmm. Okay. Because uh, she's familiar. She's okay. She'll she'll peer over there and be curious for a little bit. She'll make n a mental note to uh, be curious, and then she'll turn back to Lysander. Lysander. Have you uh, have you maybe found your match, or has that have you maybe like has someone? Have you found someone who may be uh, rier than you, possibly? Kelly, I make friends everywhere I go. Come mm. on, that's that's just my constant state of making friends and then uh, getting in debt with them, and then they stop being my friends, and then eventually I talk them into being my friends again, or I trick them into thinking I'm someone different than I was previously. And then I become friends and gain more. You understand how it goes. I'm just saying, who even knows? 
I'm I'm not a betting cat, but my bet is that I don't think you can befriend this satyr. All right, how much are we putting on it? Mm. <laughs> how about a week's worth of weeks worth of dinner? Hmm. Normally, I like having some sort of uh, actual gold deal going on in these things, but I'll never say I turned down a bet. I am going to be best friends with this strange satyr. Just we'll you see. give it time. All right. Uh, so after doing that, Lysandros uh, gets up and goes off <laughs> to just wander around. He, he's okay. going to go collect other glasses of wine to bring. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make another slide of hand check for me just to see how well you are able to get a bunch of glass. I just want to see how much wine you're able to procure. In okay. Plan. Uh, that's a, a 26. Yeah. Okay. I, well, however much wine you want to get, you are able to get it. And, you, and, and I describe some of the ways that Lysandros just randomly is grabbing wine and being covert. I just want to know what, how this looks to you. That's uh, a high for the most part, he just like walks this. up to people He'll like walk into a circle of people who are talking to me like, <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. And he'll just grab someone else's wine and like uh, everyone cheers. And he'll like be like, oh, how's that? Hey, how's it going? Oh, I haven't seen you in forever. Arm around the shoulder, just like takes it out of their hand. He's like, here, let me hold that for you for a minute. Like, especially if people are like pretty drunk already. And in fact, while you're doing the cheers to that, you, you actually run into a gentleman whose name is Vampire54, who says, remember, while the gods bless you with more competence, it does come with larger than life challenges. Cheers. Cheers to that. That's where we're at. Cheers and to that. At, at one point, um, Lysandros kind of discreetly uh, rubs the, the wool that's on the inside of his gauntlets and does a quick minor illusion. And you hear what sounds like the bartender's voice going like, next round's on the house. And as a bunch of people move towards the bar, he just goes, and that one, and that one, and that one. <laughs> and then this poor put, -a put upon server girl is like, I didn't say, I didn't even, I don't know what's happening. She's like, I don't know. And so he's like very much like, so somebody threw one. I don't know. So she's now she's trying to like deal with angry people and he's ultimately giving them uh, free drinks to to soothe them because they're so angry that they weren't getting the free drink they were offered. So you have you have really bankrupted this bar tonight. Oh yeah. Out of curiosity, as I'm looking, Kinong is kind of people watching. I don't have the highest perception, however, mm -hmm. uh, I am curious to know if I could tell that no one actually said that. Like how how showman she is, Lysandros in general, and then like you're just trying to place put two and two together. He's just people watching. Let's Let's quantify it because we do have a lot of rerolls to use tonight. So let's go ahead sure. and do that. Right now we're still at two to me and Steve have seven players. So Lysandros, why don't you make a, per a performance check? And then Zinder, why don't you make a perception check and we'll see how well you're going to pick up what he did. Okay. I'm going to cast guidance on myself. I have my eyes flash every so slightly. <laughs> okay. I only got a seven on that. Rip. <laughs> so okay. not my best performance. I'm uh, caught up in like doing other things and picking up glasses okay. at the same time. I have a plus zero to perception, so that's an uh, eighteen with my okay. guidance. That'll yeah, you can definitely tell it was fake. I think the other people didn't tell because they're drunk, and also most people don't need to be convinced to try to get a free drink if they think it's being offered to them. And so I think like essentially maybe like one person believed it and said, "Hey, they're giving free drinks," and then everybody else is like, "Well, this guy says they're giving free drinks. They're giving free drinks," and then got up and did it and. You know, eventually someone's going to do tequila on the bar because they're not going to wear a bike, but that's not the point. So <laughs> that is what's happening. So you, you can definitely tell that it feels more like a mob mentality thing versus a very convincing argument was made. Mm, okay. Um, I think. Ooh, is he that? Okay, yeah. Uh, he wears a, a, a very. Uh, What's the best way to look? You know, when someone makes their own jewelry, not saying that it doesn't look polished, but there you can tell that it was like something was put into it. There's a um, almost like a snake like ring that goes around uh, his right ring finger. finger. Um, and he just like kind of waves it ever so slightly. And Lysandros in your ear, as I cast message, you will hear, I don't actually think um, they said it was free. Um, but if it is, 
Yeah, but I just wanted you to know, just in case you didn't know. Sorry. Uh, L- Lysandros, like, stops and kind of, like, it looks a little bit like a deer in the headlights and sort of, like, spins around a bit. But he does have, like, something like <coughs> ten glasses of wine, like, in his arms. What? <laughs> uh, who? Who is that? You get one more message. Sorry, I probably should have asked if I can do this. Can I please speak to you in your mind? Or would you rather speak to me in person? No, no, uh, of course. Um, This isn't an angry god or anything, is it? No. Because I've had this happen before. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. Um, And I, I'm going to uh, wave my hand from the corner. Um, And at the same time... My hair, which has been back, it's still back, but there is a snake that crawls out of it and down my neck and then rests on my shoulder and also just kind of goes up and... Lysandros is intrigued. (laughs) Uh, He uh, takes his armful of wine and kind of like sidles over and goes, well, hello, (laughs) it's good to meet you. Uh, Seems like you're my uh, type of patron uh, with your two drinks here. And he grabs one of your, uh, he grabs your water glass and like takes a quick sip out of it. Ah! (laughs) I'm sorry. I very much expected that to have more kick to it. No, I I wanted to water down the kick. Uh, Huh. Uh, Callie and Merafine, why don't you go ahead and both make perception checks for me too to see if you notice this the snake thing just happened with this stranger at the bar. I know you're both, you're both actively looking for information or curious things. And this person just did something very curious. So uh, I'll let you both roll with advantage on this because it's exactly what, especially because Callie, you've been looking at this person and yes. Marifane, you've been, you, you've been actively looking around for something. So I will let you have it as well. Okay. Yes. Random question. Which dice do I roll? Uh, you'll roll the d20. Okay. And then you'll add your perception modifier to it. So whatever okay. that is. I got a 16 with advantage. Okay. You definitely saw it. And I saw it. What was it? Well, exactly? let me ask you, uh, Zidar, would that, would that be like, is it something that's visible to somebody you don't want to see it or? Oh, no, no. The, the snake's out. The snake okay. kind of cool. has his mind of its own. Moves out, snakes uh, out. Gotcha. All right, cool. Um, I rolled an 18 with a plus one. Yeah, you definitely saw it, too. Um, is it customary in Neolantan for uh, people to share their uh, um, drinks? I'm not from around here. Oh, well, I'm not from around here either. You know, the, the way I see it is like custom is just sort of what everybody kind of agrees to over time. And that changes a lot. So I just sort of do whatever seems like the most fun thing to do. And it, it tends to eventually work out or uh, I get driven out of town. That sounds very complicated. Eh, but if It you... actually turns out to be pretty simple in practice. That's v- v- valid. Do you you like to try new things then? <laughs> well, I mean, what can I say? When you've been around as long as I have, it, things get uh, boring otherwise. By the way, uh, the name's Lysandros. Uh, oh, oh, hi, um, Zindar. And I, I is, re- reach out is, my hand to shake. It is a pleasure to meet you. How about uh, uh, a drink on me? And he takes one of the many drinks that he has and well, just act- hands it to actu- you. Actually, before you, you, you drink that... Um, uh, can you roll me a d6? Yes, I can. I'm always going to make this random. I'm never going to be the one to decide it. It is a four. Okay. Um, 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 I reach into my my uh, my pack, um, and there's a couple of uh, like very very small vials. So I'm just like looking through them, and I get one, and I go, um, and I like pour it into your drink. Um, it, it, I'm experimenting on different herbs in, in Neolenten, uh, and I think that one might uh, s- suit you. Maybe. I don't know. It's always a mystery. Hmm. Strange man I just met has poured something into my drink. Yes. Ah, well, here we go. <laughs> you and, take- Lys- yep, Lysandros is just going to down it. As Oh, 
uh, you just drink uh, as well as your drink. You just uh, tasted an experimental elixir. You rolled a four, so that's boldness. You can add a d4 to the next uh, to every attack roll and save throw you make within the next minute. Hey, nah. all right. <laughs> mm. So practically, right now, I think he, I'm just like you're very that bold. Courage you are on, very right? bold right now. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if it uh, it might make it. I, I think I tried to infuse this one with a little bit of chrysanthemum that was dipped uh, in the in the in the slime of a gelatinous cube or thing. Um, but you, the, none of the bad effects. Well, Zindar friend, let me just say that whatever you did, it worked. I feel great. <laughs> and uh, he he's gonna just like go around and start handing the the wine glasses to other people who stray. Hey, another drink on the house! <laughs> this is Lysandros's day. <laughs> Marafine, mm -hmm. can you make for me another perception check this time at disadvantage, which means you're gonna roll the d20 twice and add your modifier, but take the lower of the two scores for me because you are distracted right now. The lower of the two scores, meaning... So if you roll twice, whichever one is the lower roll. So like, let's say you roll like okay. a five and an eight, you would roll the five. You would keep the five. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I missed the other roll. <laughs> um, okay, well, I guess I'm taking the four, but then I can still plus the one. So yeah. I guess five. <laughs> okay, a five. What kind of personal belongings does Marafine have on her? What kind of like, like I'm assuming she has a coin purse of some sort. Does she have any jewelry? Does she have any like sentimental things that are like, like necklaces or rings or anything like that? She has a, a scarf in her bag right now, which is sentimental to her because it goes on her. It's been with her since she left her place of birth. <laughs> Okay. I will say that suddenly you realize that while your attention was on this strange event happening with the the snake with the, the man with the snake and this annoying other satyr uh, dealing with him, you suddenly realize that the bag that has that scarf in it and probably maybe a change purse as well is missing. As if someone has noticed your distraction and pickpocketed it. Mm -hmm. uh, Callie please also make a perception check for me with disadvantage because you're also focusing on Lysandros and Zindar. You said perception? Yeah. Eight. Okay, you also don't notice this happen, um, but mm -hmm. you do suddenly notice behind the two people, the, your friend and his strange new pal, a woman running away from the tavern, carrying a bag in a rush. And she appears at a distance to be a heavy set black woman. Hmm. Okay. That looks familiar to you vaguely. It looks, yeah. All right. So a couple of things happen right here for Callie. One, she watches a person that just had a s snake come out of its hair head <laughs> um, pour something into her friend's drink um, and mm. then her friend drink it. And she has a flashback to her sister who also took a elixir from a certain group and God and uh, realizes that she like gets like freaked out by that because she also had to murder her sister because of it uh, because her sister became she like basically goes back into like panic mode because of this and she's like thinking about that and like oh god what's happening to Lysandra so she like starts freaking out as this happens um, and then so she instinctually just grabs at her sword and then like gets ready to jump to react. And then as this happens, she sees the person run by, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Kind of like running past where they are. So as like, like having left the uh, 
the tavern. And just to make sure it's clear, because I, I may have been too subtle, uh, this person reminds you of D. This is a person right. whose body looks very much like D's body. And right, right, right. is running the other direction, carrying a bag that she seems to have possibly just pilfered. Cool. Um, and so she's going to like, she's trying to decide between like jumping this person right now who is like causing a panic attack and like making her think of like very, very, very bad memories and like her mission that she's like, <sighs> and then she like kind of like slaps herself on the face and then she jumps after the person running. Okay. Uh, and Marafine, I will say for the sake of, of moving the story forward a little bit, I will <laughs> say that once you've noticed your bag is missing and this chain of events happening and you see this cat woman that was next to you, this giant lioness of a woman, uh, suddenly go chasing after someone that you can tell is carrying your bag. Okay. Where... Are we? Uh, probably LD. Uh, where are we standing in the from like the picture? Like how far away from like the exit are we? Okay, I will. Let me just zoom in and just kind of set this up real quick. Uh, you were probably at this table here. Can you see that ring that I'm making? In the are you looking at one twenty? Oh, I see it. I I saw something move, but now it's gone. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> bottom right. Sorry. Yeah, I had the wrong thing. Sorry, I changed screen back then. So yeah, on the very bottom right. So it was like kind of like a you're okay, probably sitting at this table here, okay? And that so like you were there, Callie and like Sanders were at that same table. I would say that this was where the bar was, and then mm -hmm. I would say that uh, Zindar and his situation was here, and I would say the woman who stole your bag is currently about here. So she has run out of the building and is running away. So she is kind of heading, like. There's not a way to like do what I wanted. Hang on a second. Uh, where to go? Now they changed this. Ah, so you're kind of seeing like someone going this direction. Okay. So you're seeing someone run out of the building, run through the doors, and then now is like running out into the open Agora. And you can tell what she's kind of trying to do is to maybe like hide, like hide herself in the crowd and this lioness woman that you had just kind of briefly interacted with is now chasing after her and has shouted a name at her mm -hmm. um and is and she's currently um Calista's currently running with her right yeah Calista's the lioness okay. woman i was talking about like Calista, okay, Calista yes. is like a like a big lion yeah so she's that. running so so she's already out the door kind of behind her then yeah, okay. chasing after her. Okay. Is that accurate, Callie? Yes. Okay. Um, then if I had time to, would I be able to just kind of run towards them and then have a moment to try and um, get Calista's attention to be like, do you know who this person is? Because they stole my stuff. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, okay. I would say make a let's make a dexterity check just to so roll roll a d twenty again and add your dexterity to it, and we'll see how fast you're able to move. Probably very fast. Yeah, imagine pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, so a seven. <laughs> okay, is that including your plus your modifier? Uh, for dexterity, I don't have a plus. Okay, so yeah, so seven. Yeah. So I'll say that you, maybe because the things are so, are happening so chaotically and they're so quick, I'll say that you actually have a little bit of trouble uh, getting out of, of the crowd of people that are also rushing towards the bar trying to get free drinks. Mm -hmm. And so you probably only make it about to the door in the time that it would take anybody else to do anything. So this woman hasn't completely gotten away, uh, but yeah, you probably haven't immediately caught up with... Uh, oh. I'm just kidding. Cool. It's it's ten. <laughs> yeah, a ten. I would say you probably have a little further of the door. <laughs> I'll, I'll say you get far enough that you can shout like, "That's my bag!" And that's probably like you probably wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to catch up with Callie because she is a cat person. Uh, but yeah. like she is a huntress, so she is able like, and she like chases down people for a living. So I think that she. You probably are able to catch up with her a little bit only because she had that moment of delay before she headed out the door. But uh -huh. once she springs into like her instinct, I think she's probably booking it. So, uh huh. Um, well, does does she hear me at least scream saying, 
hey, you know, get her. Yeah. <laughs> I, won't, I won't make you roll for that, Callie. I think in the distance that you have between you, you definitely hear that satyr's voice behind you yell, that's my bag! Or whatever, yeah. whatever it is you yell. So. You could ignore that roll. Um, can... Uh, do, do I hear her yell, that's my bag, and everything? Yeah, I'd say you're close enough to it that you can do that. Okay, so uh, Lysandro sees her yell, that's my bag, and kind of sees them running off and goes, ha, this is a per opportunity to make this person my friend and win my bet. <laughs> um, so Lysandro is uh, going to turn to Zindar and be like, hey, thank you for the drink. That, honestly, was just amazing. Ha, feels great, but I got to go after whatever's going here. Want to come? Um, I'm not done with actually, and I'll reach into my bag and get a flask. Um, but it's not like a drinking flask. It just happens to be like a, um, a thing for liquid and he pours the wine into the flask, but he's going to save it for different means. Oh, right, okay. Go. I love the way you think. <laughs> oh, no, I won't drink that. Well, I might, but not in the same way. Uh, okay. I'll, 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 what's, what's happening? Uh, I don't know. We're going to figure it out as we go. And uh, Lysandros is going to take off and head after Callie and them. And I'm I still will. inside, right? Because <laughs> my mobility I'll say you're out is the lame. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll say you're out the door. And we did it. There was confusion, by the way. Uh, you do have plus zero to your decks. That plus three okay. that you thought you had was your saving throw, which is a different thing. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll say that you made it out the door just because I'm not going to make you like Go through the nitty gritty of like sitting every padding. little bit of a step away. Uh, I just, just, I only had you roll because Callie is very naturally quick and I, and I wanted to, I just wanted to like, yeah. this out. And also, it's DD, we roll dice. Um, so I, yeah, I think that, um, um, yeah, I think that you are out the door. You're probably, you're probably able to keep pace with these other two that are now coming after as well. I think maybe like Zindar maybe is a tiny bit behind because he was pouring something into a flask, but everybody else is able to run right after you. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I will, as I'm done, I will, um, uh, okay. I'll put another copper on the table because I think that's what I'm supposed to do, and then I will leave. So precious. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, we're going to take a real quick, like, five-minute break, uh, and we will be right back. So we are we're going to end that. We're going to put a, a button on that scene. Everybody's chasing after this person running out, and we will see you back here in about five minutes. All right, so we have now set up a fairly elaborate chase that's happening. I have now actually – I went ahead and grabbed a chase map while we were taking our short – break so i'm gonna switch over to that so if you are in rule 20 i'm just gonna i'm not gonna run a full-on like deep chase scene i just wanted to have something here so we kind of have an idea of of what's happening uh so i switched over to that and so i will say that this right hand side is coming out of the tavern and I'll say that this is like heading into like the marketplace in the Agora. So let's go ahead and put some characters on the map. This is our first map usage of the season, which is very whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, mm -hmm. Where Maybe are our like character that. tokens at? I don't know if I have I the... I have never used... I have barely used Rule 20. Okay. Um, Don, there we go. So there's K. Hey. A little bit smaller. Hey, Giant me. Callie. <laughs> that's that's less about Callie's size and more about Riley throwing a map together very quickly and not sizing it properly for uh, <laughs> what we're doing. Uh, why is Lysandros now not? Okay. Dom, I don't know what's happening and I feel like I'm in I'm a moron. Um I'm dragging everybody over. There, okay, there's there's Zindar. We, yeah, I, I, want, I want everybody to be one square, but I can't see. Like, I love how prepped I am. I love being just it's the DM okay. who's hey, ready to go for it. No show. matter what, you're much better at roll twenty than I am. So you know, if we get if if we can get the art, get the get those tokens, we can upload them to our sheets and then just drag them on, and we can control them about that. So you're I actually think you should have that power already. I think that actually is something. I don't. That, I don't have access to them right now. Okay, I will. I will fix that later. Yeah. I, I think I know how to make that happen. Um, but uh, yeah, let me. Um, 
yeah, I'll figure that out later. So cool. Uh, yeah, so this is currently where we are. And then I'm just going to throw a random person in to be our, do I still have? Oh my gosh, I actually have a figure that we can use. So there's a woman here <laughs> who's running. So I'll say she is about here. And yeah, so this is where we are at. So I'll say that Callie, you are a little bit further ahead. Uh, I'll say at this point, I'll think Marafine, you are pretty close behind Callie. And then I think that uh, Lysandros is there. And I think that uh, Zindar, you are a little bit behind because you're filling up your flask. So here we no. go. We are, yeah, we are now going to roll for initiative just to get through this in a orderly fashion. So everybody uh, roll a d20. And if you want to go ahead and uh, add your initiative bonus to it, then I will find out where we're, we're going to go. Sorry, I'm a little rusty. I apologize. It's been a while since no, I've run a campaign. So. First initiative of the season. All right. Here we go. All right. Oh, why? Oh, oh gonna, no. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to re-roll that. <laughs> also, Joy, uh, you wrote investigation, not initiative. Initiative's like right in the middle of your sheet. Yep, I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, yeah, good, thanks, Amanda. I appreciate that. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for having an eye out. All right, so let's start. Uh, That's better. With... <laughs> right, yeah, I don't have the roll open on my. Yeah, there we go. So, Marifin, you are a fourteen. So I'll put that in for you. Oh, I almost put yours in. The it's a fourteen one. plus one. Okay. Oh no, the the plus one. I believe it, you. It says you want a thirteen plus the one. So. Oh, you're okay. Um, okay. Cool. Then, that this extension yeah. is cool. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> yeah. Was oh, it not showing mine? Uh, not in roll 20. That's okay. Uh, so, Kelly, what did you get? I rolled a one. I think you I'm going to re-roll. Can you? Oh, yeah, yeah. You just re-roll. We have re-rolls. Go ahead and use it. Yeah. Them. I'm going to re-roll that. Come on. Oh, my gosh. It looked like a one, but it's a seven. Okay. <laughs> okay. <all right. laughs> that would have been so fun. All right. Uh, all right. And then, uh, Zindar, what did you get? 17. 17. Pretty good. Nice. And I rolled right. a nine. You rolled a nine. Great. So, all right. And then I'm going to add this one here. And then uh, this is going to be, what did she get? Maybe D. Yeah. Maybe may D. All right. Um, <laughs> let me just To D or pop. not to D. <laughs> all right. Let me go ahead and just pop open a roll 20 window here real quick. D and D beyond window. D and D beyond. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna have this person roll for their initiative. Oh wow, okay, uh, initiative twenty. Not a not a natural twenty, but a twenty nonetheless. All right, so uh, yeah, I'll say that. So for her move, she's gonna dash. Uh, so she's gonna go. To, actually, she's gonna run here, and then she's gonna throw down these boxes to make it a little bit more of a hazard getting to her. And that's gonna be her first turn. All right, and then we go to Marifine. Uh, Marifine, you are next. Wait, sorry. Uh, Zindar and Lysandros, you didn't, you said a, you had a 17 Zindar? Yep. And Lysandros had a nine. For some reason it didn't get registered in roll 20. There we go. Now we are in descending order. So now, now we go from the mystery woman to Zindar. You are 17. What do you do for your first turn? So Zindar really doesn't know what's happening. Uh, and I'm not going to uh, like, you know, meta and try to get anything. So he's just following Lysandros, really unsure exactly what's happening. Uh, uh, and he's more just kind of looking around because he doesn't really know who has done what. Uh, so, uh, he's going to, uh, I'm my action will be to, um, move with Lysandros. Um, so actually we're going to go to stand here and just be like, I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I mean, I'm not in his way, but, um, yeah. So uh, my action will be to, uh, do the dash action. Um, when Lysandro moves. Okay, so you're kind of like holding your action. I'm ready in my action, guys. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Sounds good. 
good. All right. And then while you were talking, I think Dom was able to unlock the token. So while we while you're waiting for your, your action to go, see if you can make if you can move around. If not, let me know and I'll figure I'll try to figure it out on my end. All right. Uh now I did. We Thank move, you. awesome. Uh now we go to uh Marathine. What do you do? Um so is 14, would you say is pretty agile? Yeah, so what uh, for initiative, what what we do for initiative is just rolling to see what order everyone goes in oh, okay and so because you had that high roll that means <laughs> that you went you, you basically went second after zindar zindar had the highest okay. roll now you've gone so then yeah so initiative is basically just our it's like dnd's way of managing combat so that everyone's not trying to go at the same time so essentially each one of these rounds is about six seconds of time so okay. it's like this is what your character is doing in these six seconds so you don't don't worry about basing your action on what your role is that's just determining where you are in the lineup. So you are second right okay. now in the lineup after our baddie. And okay. And is this tent here, would you say has like um, a walkthrough area? Yeah, like, I would I... say you can cross through it. I would say it's it's probably what we call difficult terrain. So it would take, you normally you can go about 30 feet. So you can go about uh, six of these squares in one turn. Okay. Uh, but I would say that through those, that through that tent, each square would count as two, so you'd only be able to go okay. four squares if you go through that. Okay. I start. I think. I think I remember. I started like here. Okay. Yeah. So you. Um, I, I think. I think you can get to the other side of that tent, like maybe like towards the edge of that fountain, if in one. Yeah, move. that's exactly where I was going to move myself. Yeah, I'd say you can do that in your in your turn, and then you also have okay. the ability to do an action. So you could do what's called dashing. So you go double your movement, so you'd be able to go six more squares to get closer to her. Mm -hmm. Um. Or you could, if you have a projectile, you could throw it at her. You could try to attack her. Um, or if you have a spell that is ranged, you could do that as well. I definitely don't trust my rolls to throw a projectile. So okay. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind using the dash to see if I can at least just make it to the other side to try and cut her off. Okay. Uh, let me see here. I think let's just go ahead and see. I'm kind of being fast and loose with the distance because I just kind of threw this map together, but let's yeah. see. Yeah, I, I would say you can get to, you can, you get to, you can get to like in between this tent and this little booth. So like okay. there's a little gap there you can get to. Oh, you moved me so further than I would. I thought I was going to yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you can go there okay. or you could get to about here. But if you got to about where that is, you would have to wait. Cause you'd have to like. This is the boxes. She, she put an obstacle in your way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to, I'm just going to, be here in hopes that I can catch the like, cutter off. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Great. And then that is your turn. Now we go to Lysandros. What do you do on your turn, Lysandros? Okay, so Lysandros um, is a rogue and a satyr. So he technically move 105 feet in a turn, I think, by like using his move and then dashing and then using his cunning action to dash as a bonus action. Okay. So Lysandros is just going to set out through the square, being like, no, friend, don't worry, I'll get your bag. Just like, what are friends for? Keeps using the word friend. Uh -huh. You're still trying and to win your bet with Callie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, hey, Jordan, I'm going to give you a point of inspiration for that, because I love that so much. So if, yes. you, if you want to tonight, you can roll one roll with advantage for your inspiration. Yeah, I'll take it. And Tori, I'm going to give you a point of inspiration too because you're you're kind of throwing yourself into the fire here with this game. So, <laughs> what inspiration like, yeah, means? Uh -huh. We already have rerolls, but what inspiration means is you can roll with advantage at some point, which basically means that remember how earlier as you roll two dice and take the lower of the scores. Uh huh. Uh, on one roll of your choosing, somewhere along the line, uh, you can actually roll twice and take the higher of the two scores. Okay. And I also do want to point out because you did say you didn't trust your rolls. I just want to let you know that our audience has donated to the show. Uh, Dom, are we still at two for me and seven for players? Woo. Oh, Callie is one. So we have two. Oh we God, have two. Joy. You actually have the ability right now, Joy. You can re-roll at least one of six rolls because okay. that's that's for that that's a pot of re-rolls for the table. But mm -hmm. that is a lovely donation from our our audience. And and Ashlyn, just so you know, your thing fell down. Oh, cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's gonna be like that the rest. Yeah, I'm of sure the it's night. fine. I just wanted to make sure you knew it because I didn't want you to go. Oh no, how long has it been up there? It just happened. Like it literally just happened. 
so cool. this is a wild night. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm this movie. all right. Um, uh, so Lysandro, so you you are you going to use the range of your 105 feet or? Uh, he probably doesn't need to go the whole way because he doesn't necessarily want to catch this person too far ahead of everybody else. That seems like a a potentially dangerous thing to do. But he is going to go like pretty far. He's going to try and catch up with Callie and maybe uh, get a little uh, ahead of her if he can. And he he does it, you know, the the satyr way where he's kind of like bounding off of things and and uh, th there's a lot of unnecessary jumping over stuff that kind of goes on because that's just sort of like his style. Yeah, he's very showman. I was showman. like, did I just hear 105 feet? Yeah, because I can move and then dash and then uh, oh, 35, and then I can cunning yeah, action yeah. dash another time. So I'm a fast little satyr. <laughs> yeah. But I don't go all that. Um, so I, I will start. Uh, Lysandros leaps throughout the uh, like little bazaar in the streets and, and moves past. And as he sees and he goes by Callie, he looks at the person they're chasing. He goes, hey, is that D? And doesn't really like wait for time to uh, find out what she says and just kind of keeps bounding past. Halt, villain! <laughs> all right, that's so it. you say you, you said you got a little past Callie? Yep. Okay, I'm going to put you up here so you're not quite to the the crate damage yet, but you're like closer to her now. You've kind of closed the Perfect. Distance. That seems right. exactly where I and, go. And just so you know, my held action goes off and I follow, but I can't do all that. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna. I, you were coming. You were gone when he did it. So I was gonna make sure I ran that by you when you came back. Oh, oh great. Cool, cool, cool. No worries. No worries. Thank uh, you. Yeah. yeah I, think, actually, I think. you know what? Uh, because Lysandros uh, notices that he's being followed, he 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 doesn't go quite as far as he could because he's like, "Oh, come on, <laughs> new person, <laughs> friends." That's All right. Really f far. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, in my mind, I like to imagine that Lysandros thinks that if he makes a second friend, he extra wins the bet. Like, he's, like, adding a bonus to his bet. Yeah, well, I mean, this this person also just had, like, the best drink <laughs> supplement he has ever had, so. Oh, yeah, what was the effect of that that powder in the drink? I think I missed that. Uh, I guess for the next minute, he had, um, he could add, a, it's basically bless for an attack roll and saving throw. Okay, I think we're still in that. Bold. Okay. If we launched into initiative right after that, I'll say that you have that for uh, if that comes up. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, now we move to to Callie, the super fast cat lady that I mentioned, who is actually the slowest <laughs> of the pack. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah, she like got just caught up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but she ran out into the market and was just lost track of everything i think the alcohol kicked in finally um so she she runs out um okay is there um how far can i move 35 yeah and then if you wanted to go Double 70 then you would dash that would be your whole action how far would that get me let's see do you get any special movements as a as a um no i i did um, when I had my, uh, oh, your, no. your headpiece. Was it my headpiece? I could have swore I had a wonder trait that made me like fast. You might have had no. something. Okay. Yeah. No, we'll I don't figure know. it out. It's okay. Is, are there any horses? Uh, not, no, not in, this is like deep in the city. This is like, oh. yeah, I, I, there's not a whole no, lot no, of, like a there's not, there's not, there is not a, uh, an Assassin's Creed character running through one of the horse. <laughs> you, have a moment, you have a moment where you think you see a horse, but it's actually just a centaur who was bending over to pick something up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's I'm kind like, of annoyed that you tried to make him into a horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I go to reach and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and uh, continue running uh, away from them. Have a good day. <laughs> and uh, continue to double move towards who I think is D. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll let you move your foot. And just remember that this, this is uh, considered difficult terrain right here because mm -hmm. she threw a box down. Okay. Uh, okay. That is, uh, that's your turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, now we go back to Mystery Lady, um, to Maydee. Uh, and she runs this way, but then she runs into a barrier. There's a bunch of shots. She can't quite 
gets through the stall. So now she is 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 trying to figure out what she's going to do. So she's going to do a rare use, especially as a... I'm not even sure that I can do this as an NPC, but whatever, I'm going to use it. She's essentially using... Um, uh, like the dodge action. So she like realizes that she's kind of cornered. So she's prepping herself for an attack. Mm. And that's going to be her turn. All right. Uh, Zindar, you are back now to your regular spot in the lineup. At this point, is it obvious that like we're looking for this individual? Like, can I tell that this person has done something? Are they, I guess, can I tell that the, the people like Lysandros and, Lysandros knew the cat lady, and maybe also oh, I didn't. I guess I don't see the satyr. Uh, can I tell there's a connection to that person who's running? Yeah, I will say I'm, I want to make you roll for that because they're talking to each other. So, and you kind of did see them sitting together at a table before he came and approached you. So, I want to make you roll. I'll say that's a pretty safe assumption. They know each other and have some connection. Well, okay. Lysandros has also been yelling like, "Hey, give my friend's bag back!" As yeah. he's been running. <laughs> So, no, dead. Good. Yeah. To so know. you might think that if you see the other side, you might think that he and the Seder are friends. That would be an inaccurate <laughs> statement. <Yes>. But you, <laughs> I think, think anyone that. would think that because it's a very reasonable assumption. Yeah. Really? Uh, is it? A, oh. Is it a safe assumption that all satyrs are friends, Jordan? Think about that statement for just a little while. I think it's safe to say that these satyrs are friends. <laughs> Perhaps best friends. Hmm. We'll see. I I run over to uh, Lysandros. Because she is like my only friend. I don't know if we're friends yet. Only person I know. Uh, and I say, oh, that person st stole something? Th that's that's never good. Um, I, I can, oh, oh, oh. And I reach into my big bag. And again, it's like a, it's like a small bag. Maybe like, you know, a, a, sat a, a mini satchel with a uh, strap on it. But he is reaching into this thing uh, just so it's known. And he like goes in. And he grabs this uh, this bottle, uh, this glass bottle, and it has a a white um, like um, kind of translucent liquid in it. He goes, um, yeah. Uh, and I toss it at the person. I need them to make a dexterity save. Wait, not yet. Um, okay. uh, I toss the glass, and it shatters at the bottom. And all of a sudden, lots of web comes out as I cast web. Okay. Um, so on their turn, uh, or anyone that enters that uh, space during the turn needs to make a deck save, and if they fail, they are restrained. Okay, good to know. And um, the webs are flammable, blase, blase. Great. All uh, right. That might help, maybe. I, I, oh. don't, I don't know. Oh, that was cool. Oh, I, I made it myself. Wait, what does that one taste like? You don't that, drink you, anymore. You don't want to drink that one. <laughs> that's uh, I, I, I don't no bonus action, really. I'm just checking. No, that, that's what I'll do. That's all I do. Great. All right, and now, uh, Marifine, we are back to you. Uh, so I can't do anything from a distance, but I'm pretty sure I cannot hear what they're talking about because I'm technically on the other side. Right. Um, no, I don't think you're far enough away that you can't hear them because they're kind of shouting. So I, I think that like you're definitely within hearing distance of people. Um, but I also think that you you are definitely within range that you could catch up with her at this point. Because I think like okay. I'll say I'll say that you can definitely go through. The, I think these are like tents that are attached, but there's a walkway here, and I'm not even gonna yeah. say difficult terrain because there's no. I don't see any like things on the ground there. So I think you can. I think you can catch up with her at this point. Okay. Well, then, if I... Because she's readying for attack, right? She is. Well, she stopped, and actually, she what she did was, like, get ready to dodge, because she, like, doesn't... Know, she's, like, afraid someone's going to attack her. But you mm -hmm. did also see this tall person throw, a, like, a bottle at, at her that turned into, a like, a web that appeared. So you do know that if you get too close, you might get caught up in that web, but you possibly could help block her in or trap her. Okay. Um... How many feet is, is that space for the web, Zindar? It is a 20-foot square. Okay, so I'll nice. say that means that basically up until, like, this spot, like, right, like, the square in front of her is there, and that, yeah. Well, it'd be, it'd be, what, 10 on each side, right? So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'd say that, like, 
Yeah, this seems about right. So about from here okay. to here would be. Okay. Bob, do I know who threw it? Who th who threw it? Who threw it? Or I just I just see that it was thrown. I think you just saw that it was thrown. I think that you are currently being blocked by uh -huh. a tent, so you probably like a pile of boxes. So you assume it's one of the people who was chasing her along with you. You can probably say, okay. you can safely make that assumption if you want to make that assumption. Uh, but I don't think you saw which one of them did it. Okay. Well, then I would make my way to this area now and then suddenly stop. So that way, you know, I don't get webbed myself. Yeah, and, it's, and then, it's a clear hazard that I think you noticed. <laughs> yeah, um, and then oh, and then I I turn to to where the three of them are now and just ask, w wait, which one of you guys did this? <laughs> it's really sticky. I haven't really learned the um the correct formula yet, so just be careful. <laughs> well, I hope I hope my goods aren't damaged because she stole it from me earlier, and I don't want them all. What is this web? <laughs> no, it, it doesn't stick to people. It sticks to the ground or maybe the ceiling, and sometimes the 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 the, the wall. But I, I it, it slides off of people pretty well unless you step in it, and then it doesn't slide off that well. Got it. And then I turn to D. Is her name? Or uh, or I do I not know that you, you just I, they're just oh, they're just yeah no, they, they're, they're, they, they have shouted D so you might assume mm -hmm. this person's name is D but mm -hmm. that's like your you don't know for sure what her name is okay well then I turn to this person <laughs> and then I um then I say to her um so I'm assuming your name may or may not be D but I don't know what intentions you had. I would like my stuff back, please. It seems to me that I'm having one of those days where everyone keeps trying to take my things and I'm not exactly happy about this one. Excellent. All right, <laughs> so that is that is your turn. Do you do any actions on your turn? Do you do any, like, do you try to attack? Do you try uh, to, like... No attack yet, because I'm very close combat and I don't want to get sticky. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't think she's had a chance to respond yet, so mm -hmm. we'll see what happens with Lysandros and Callie before she responds. Um, so, Lysandros, what's happening with you? Lysandros will go, I'll get your bag for you, and he's going to run and then just leap fully into uh, the middle of the uh, the sticky web area to try and get the bag. <laughs> okay. Oh my okay. god. Uh, so I, I, from what I understand, you have to make a dexterity saving throw, and then if you fail, then I'll let I'll make it tell you what happens. Mm -hmm. Yep, all of this sounds correct. Uh, let me go to my saves. Dexterity saving throw. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh, well, we have rerolls, <laughs> which is a seven total. We have rerolls. We have rerolls. We should use them. Yes. All oh, right. I'll do it. Why not? Hey, that's the exact opposite of a one. Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so a that's a twenty-six 20? total. Natural twenty, baby. Let's go. Yeah, All right. So, yeah, seems like you you avoided the net. Yeah, so just to describe exactly how he does it, Lysandros uh, uh, kind of does a, a little bit of like a uh, Assassin's Creed wall run at first, and then like does a little flip in the air and lands like boop, right in a single area that doesn't quite have net on it. And it's like, ha ha. <laughs> All right, uh, I am going to say that you are close enough to her now I'm not going to make you roll for it. It's obviously not your friend D. Like once you get that close to it, you know, it's a woman who looks a lot like D, but is not D. Um, and then we get, uh, we get to Callie. All right. Callie's going to shout. Is it D? Can, can you tell D to stop running? It's, it's not D. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Did you say it's not D? It's not D. Sorry. Really? I know, I know, I was fooled. I look just like her. Okay, well, guess we're going into this. All right, I'm gonna try to run into her. I, is this the rest of my movement? Ooh, I have a Z power. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm, I'm going through the sticky web. 
keep in mind also that this is also default terrain right here. Okay, so how much is that? Down. So you would lose about five feet of distance by doing that. Each square? Uh, just this one, I say it's where she did. So instead of being instead of moving thirty five, if you have thirty five, you can only move thirty. Okay. Yeah, I still had plenty of plenty of room. Okay. Uh, Omega, does the does the web still affect? So you also yep. make a dexterity saving throw on the on the web. Cool. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> what is with my rolls? They're so bad. <laughs> we have rerolls. We have four more rerolls left. So if you want How to many? use one. Uh, four? Actually, we have five left, right? I think we have five left. Because you only use one of the six, yeah. They're meant okay. to be used. We're, we're, we're using it. Thank you, rerolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Exactly. yeah. Exactly. I rolled a two, and I rolled the exact same thing with my reroll. <laughs> it is just meant to be. It was meant to be. All right. Uh, okay. So yeah, you you definitely. So so Omega, please describe what happens to Callie as she jumps into this web. Uh, as you jump into it, and you that you know when you jump, you don't completely stop. There's like that momentum. Yeah, there's no momentum. You stop, and you get you are get stuck. You are effectively restrained. You have to use your action to make a strength check against my spell save DC. If you succeed, that's how you get out. There's another thing, but I'm not going to say it out loud because I don't know if y'all would know it or not. So okay, yeah, I don't think they would. So that's fair. Unless you've seen the spell web before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think Callie. I don't think Callie is like up to date on all the cool magical things that happen because she tends to avoid those. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So I guess that does that like in my turn then. Cause that's like, no, I have to use my action. Yeah. You would use your action to get out of the, um, yeah. Yeah. You can use your action to try to get out or yeah. And if you have a bonus action, it doesn't require you to not be restrained. You could probably do that too. But. Okay. But to get out, I'd have to like move out of the web area. I couldn't like try to restrain D not D. I don't think you would be able to because you are restrained. So you would not be able to restrain her. Because like it's basically like you've you've now gotten caught yeah. in this way. Imagine you've been caught in a spider web. Like, you know, yeah. you're not okay. home right now, you're walking through a spider web. Cool. All right. Callie is just gonna kind of sigh. Oh, I got that right. <laughs> yeah, you can you can try to use your action to to break out okay. of it. You do have that ability. So I, I will try that. What do I need? What's your DC? Uh seventeen. Uh, which decks again? Strength, strength, strength check. Not. Oh, I can do that. I have yep. to be able to do that. <sighs> oh no, that's that's not that. That's slower than that. Do you want to use one of our four more rerolls that we have left? <laughs> yeah. and, and a note, unfortunately, it's not a save. It's a check. Oh, it's oh yeah, a check. You, you make it. yeah, roll a check. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead and well, what what is your what is your regular check modifier? Plus four. Okay, so that would have that would have only been a eight. Uh, eight. So yeah. Okay, he's gonna reroll. <sighs> Eighteen, baby. Oh, just beat it. <laughs> just beat it. Okay, so you are able to break free of of this webbing. You can't do anything else on your turn now, uh, unless you have a bonus action that doesn't require you who have already attacked, but. <sighs> I think Callie is just kind of like, just, just webs, potions and bottles and we need to talk after this. this okay. I, I, it was, it, it was, it was there and I didn't expect you to run into it. Yeah, I know. I did it. I made a choice. I made a choice. You should have just avoided it. <clears throat> so can I have my so bag? <laughs> So Kelly, now that you are face to face with this woman, um, you can definitely tell that like you could see why you thought it was D from a distance, but now that you're closer, her face, she's older for one thing. Uh, and she has like a couple of like scars on her face. You can tell she's definitely been through some action. Um, whereas D normally wears like a very ornate like gladiator outfit that's very like decorative and mostly more for like performative reasons. This person has on it is armor similar to these, but it has seen combat. Like it is, it is like it's been rough. It's got it's got like scratches all over, and it's got blade marks on it. Uh, and it also you can tell that maybe a little more of a mariner aspect of it. So she maybe she's a bit of a pirate, like she's probably more on the open seas, or at least in a coastal town. So someone who probably has known her way around some ships or so. Recommend like you recognize the look from people you saw 
going to and coming from the island that you vacationed on with with your old fetching party and uh so yeah you can you you can get why you thought it was d she has some similar facial structure but not you don't know not necessarily that she's related to her just like you can you can get that she has that vibe but it is definitely not her um and then but you do think let's go ahead and make a insight check i don't know what else to have you roll for this so i'm going to have you roll insight Oh, I think Ashton might have frozen. <laughs> He's just, just stuck in the spider web. Are you back? <laughs> okay, wow, that we'll is a really good web spell. I kind of, I can't. I can't hear. Yes, I did. Can you hear me? Little green dot. Oh. Yeah, I can hear her. I can hear. 18. Me? I, I've okay. been able to so, hear you this uh, whole time. Uh, Ashley, if you can hear me, you you I will say that with that roll, because that's a pretty high roll, you get a pretty good idea this is the person the bounty that you got was for. It's just okay. the bounty wasn't actually well. for you. Okay, Ashley can hear me. So Ashley knows this information. The audience knows this information. Everybody else knows it. Uh, so that's that's what's happening now. So you have found your bounty. It just unfortunately is uh, not the 18? bounty you were hoping it would be. Okay. Okay. It is now her turn. She is going to try to make a dexterity saving throw. Ashton, you may want to just hop out and kind of come back in because I don't know if that's um, okay. Yeah, she only got a ten on her dex save, um, mm -hmm. so she is caught in the web and. So she shouts something like, she's like, oh, I don't know who this D is, uh, but I was just paid to take the, to, to, to rob the Seda. I was told, find the Seda who's friends with the cat lady and take a bag, and I did it. Uh, so I'm no friends with anyone here, so what did you take my bag for? Wow. Okay, wait a minute. Let's evaluate that <laughs> sentence real quick. Because we all just went out of our way to go help find your bag, which sounds to me like the action of friends. Would everyone here agree? Were you actually, actually... the definition of friend it oh never mind. I'll I'll talk later. Uh were you actually getting my bag or were you chasing something called D? Who apparently doesn't seem like this is it. Well, I thought I was doing both, but it turns out I was just doing the bag thing, which just means that what I'm doing is even more out of the uh, the purest uh, friendship that, that I, I mean, I, I kind of feel it like bonding, right? Like, d d yeah. So then I turn to the web woman and say, so anyways, the satyr's bag you're looking for is not mine. It's this one over here, and he's been still in drinks all night. So have fun with looking for his bag, uh, because I want nothing to do with this. I do not know these people. <laughs> all right, right. Look, I I don't know. You were at a table. You were sitting right next to him and the cat lady. So I just saw a satyr with a bag. I was told rob the satyr. Um, this seems to be... A, a big case of mistaken identity. So I apologize for that. Um, just doing my job. And uh, great. Your, so I think your, we're all... your job is to steal stuff from people. That's not really nice. Uh, I mean, I didn't say it was He's nice. Right. I just said it was a job. Well, are you going to give the bag back? Um, I mean, you got me stuck in your stuff here, so I really don't have much of a choice in the matter. I think we can drop out of initiative at this point. I think we're, I think mm -hmm. combat is over because she's effectively restrained. Um, can, um, can, is Lysandros close enough to grab the bag? Uh, Twitch slays D&D. Thank you for the raid. Um, hey, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I think she's restrained. I don't think that at this point she can really fight back. So, yeah, I think that you are able to get the bag. Uh, okay. Well, actually, let me let me ask you this, uh, Marafine. If you see Lysandros go for the bag, are you going to try to get there before he gets to it? Yes, I would like to make sure he doesn't have hands on my bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Callie. While you were gone, what you, what happened was uh, you heard from this woman that she was hired to steal the bag from the satyr who was friends with the cat lady. I think she's frozen she, again. Okay. Um, I can we've, we've hear her audio now. Physical, yeah, audio hey, at least is what matters. Yeah. Well, so sort of working. 
As long as we can hear her, I'm okay with it. Uh, it's just when we couldn't even hear her, that was a problem. Ashwin, can you speak for a second? Yeah. Hello. Okay, cool. We have we have Ashlyn, so that's what her her lovely dulcet tones are. What we need more than anything else. So, um, great. Uh, we are close to the end anyway, so this is wraps up. We can just kind of get through uh, this next moment. And so, so Ashlyn, we have dropped out of initiative now because she mega failed her uh, dexterity save. So she is caught up in the webbing. She has explained that she was hired by someone to to steal from the satyr who is friends with the cat lady. And she made a mistaken identity because you were sitting next to Marifine at the table. So that is why this happened. And this is where we are now. So Lysandros is going to try and grab that bag so he can give it to his his probably best friend and uh, just prove how like loyal and, and good a person and, and worth associating with he is. Oh yeah, uh, Ashley, just so you know, while you were gone, uh, Marafine said, state, she blatantly stated to to not D that that she is not friends with Lysandros. So I don't know if that how that affects your bargain, <gasps> how that affects Which your wager. With Lysander, which which seems clear to everyone there is just a ruse that Marfine is saying to try and throw the criminal off of the scent of friendship. <laughs> uh, wait, so the, dinner does, for a week? <laughs> does he lean it like? Have I already grabbed the bag, or is he, is he leaning in? I'm trying to get it before him. I would say you two are both going for it at the same time, if that makes sense to you. Okay. Um, I think because she's stuck, I think you have to pull it from her. Like I don't think it's stuck to the webbing, but I think you would have mm -hmm. to like get it. So I don't, okay. think she, I don't think it's like right in front of you. Okay. Um. Well, then, like as I'm reaching through, I look at, I look at him and say, "Do you mind? I think you've already done enough damage today. Uh, if you can just please step back and let me take my stuff and go on my merry way." What? This, this hurts! I'm helping! Are you? Because I feel like as soon as you stepped in and started making a ruckus and taking people's drinks, all of a sudden, we're on this wild goose chase, and my bag got stolen because of your... I, oh. whatever, whatever reason why they want you, I don't know why. Well... Uh, uh, oh, speaking of which, actually... If I may... Yes. Go on, Callie. Oh, I was, gonna, I was going to say, if I may, while my, well, my friend here is as rambunctious as they get and conniving and all the things you may think, I can't, I can't really say it's, I don't think it's fair to say it was his fault that your bag got stolen. I mean, it, it was on you. And I mean, if, if she was sly enough to take it from you, is that really his fault? Hey, cat lady, don't blame my good friend here for losing her bag. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, I think what's important here is that clearly it's one of your faults and I can just be on my way. Um, and, you know... Whoops, made a mistake, mistaken identity. Oh, so I bunch of luck. Zendar uh... has been walking forward and he's taken out a flask and he, like, there's like an uh, aroma that comes out um, and he's just um, into that person's direction. They need to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Not her strong suit. Yeah, it's a three. Yeah, I guess. No modifier. I guess cast suggestion. Okay. Um, and I say, I believe it is time for you to turn yourself in to the authorities for the theft of someone's uh, belongings. I don't think that's really nice. So give their, give her, her, I believe, I, I don't want to assume, um, give her her back, back and please go to the authorities at once. You? Well, I like you. She goes, well, <laughs> this is yours and you should have it back because it wasn't nice of me to take it. And she hands you the bag. 
Uh, and like, kind of like, even like under a magic spell, she tends to like move it away from Lysandros. Like she can kind of tell he's going for it. And she's like, no, it goes to her. Um, and then she's as like, I, as I cast that, the web dissipates. Cause that's another, uh, and it's not actually, but the web does dissipate. Okay. Um, she goes, Roy, I'm going to find the authorities and turn myself in. Cause it wasn't nice. Uh, and then I grab my bag and then I start to walk away and then something dawned on me and then I turned around and said wait a minute why did you want to steal belongings from the satyr that is friends with the giant cat lady oh yeah I'm also interested in the answer to that question uh, I wasn't talking to you but yes <laughs> and she my goes oh, I have to go me. She goes, I'm going to go turn myself into the authorities and because it wasn't nice what I did, so I'm going to go do that. Oh, I'm the authorities. I am absolutely the authorities who has a great bounty I want to claim off of you. Yep, authorities right here. Hi. Okay. Uh, make a, a persuasion check for me uh, with <laughs> advantage. Actually, you know what? Make an intimidation check. Right. I'm gonna say intimidation feels more like the speed of this. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um... How do I make, okay, boop, and a boop. Woo, natural 20! <laughs> oh, yeah, you are very convincing. Uh, you do there seem you like a bounty hunter, you do seem with the authority. And then so when you say, I'm the authority, and she goes, well, that makes it really easy on me then, doesn't it? Good, so yeah, yeah. you're the authorities, I'm here. And she like goes, I'm turning myself into you. I tried to steal a bag and it wasn't nice. And then I think it's just at that point. And I would like to know her. who put you up to it. Uh, the boss. <laughs> she was mad because he cost her a lot of money. And so she wanted me to get it back for him. But I'm not going to say any more than that because I don't want to cross her because she might get really mad at me if I do. Who, who's the boss? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Tony uh, Danza. <laughs> it was good to I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I actually know the answer to this one. I happen to have won a lot of money from someone who may or may not be a legitimate business person, but is much more likely like the leader of a, a sort of mob group. And um, I have a lot more money than I used to now. Oh, good. I'm glad you know, because I don't want to get in trouble for putting the Gorgon's name out there. So I'm glad that you already know it. And I the don't who? say it. I did. I Nothing. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Uh, by the Gorgon. Know. Nope. Nope. Yeah, didn't say it. He already knew it. Just You know, the, you know nope, the Gorgon? No, if I, I didn't, I didn't say anything about the Gorgon. I, he already knew. So just like, don't tell her that I snitched because I didn't. I, I just, I. I, no, take out a, I take out my book and I start writing in it. I know. You are, did, did I snitch and you're writing my name? I, you don't know my name, don't we? We can't tell anybody my name. Is. Well, well, she said she's the authority in order for you to confess what you've done. You have to tell her your name. Make a persuasion check because that's actually a pretty good point. <laughs> I had kind of thought that she was done, but now that you said that, you're right. The rule instruction was except for. And I'm going to support her in that. We have three saying, more. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you need to come with me, actually. You need to turn yourself okay. in by coming with me. All right. Uh, um, Marifine, you can go ahead and make an episode check with advantage because you have Callie helping you and she already got an apple 20 on her intimidation check. So she, she's, this woman is terrified of this cat lady. Okay, so wait, what? <laughs> so roll roll it twice, take the higher of the two scores. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, right. that's much better. <laughs> yeah, that does it. Uh, both were good, but the second one was very good. Um, so like, your persuasion is very good. Oh, bards, that's right. Um, so yeah, your persuasion is very good. She's like, right, you know what? That's a very good point. Uh, I did have to confess to the authorities. Yes, I was hired by the Gorgon to steal money from the satyr who was friends with the scary cat lady because the Gorgon has a score to settle with the satyr. And so she wanted me to get his money so that she could lead him into a trap. I think I wasn't supposed to say that last part too. I'm very bad at not saying things that I'm not supposed to say. 
Did I miss the name? <laughs> the Gorgon is the name. No, I didn't say it. I did. God, you're very good at getting me to say things I don't want to say about the Gorgon. Hey, and, and, and so L Lysandros is going to turn in and go like, okay, Callie, double or nothing on the friend bet, but we switch it to this stranger. I'm listening. And Lysandros is going to turn around and go, hey, we're all friends here, right? And tap her on the shoulder and just cast Charm Person. On on this, this not D person? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this poor person. All she did was try to do one scam and now what's the saving throw for a charm person? Uh, okay. So the save is a wisdom saving throw, okay. which I think is just 12. Okay. Oh, you, she just missed it. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use one of my GM rerolls because I haven't <laughs> used any. I have two. Because I, okay. That's a 16. She beats it. So yeah. So this, that, that you, you feel it not work on her. And I go, ah. <sighs> Damn, I am going to owe Callie a lot of dinners. <laughs> well, I guess the Gorgon would be happy about that because it costs you money and she doesn't want you to have money. So that's um, good. And where is this Gorgon person? I don't think that I have to confess that because <laughs> I think that I wasn't asked to confess to you. Uh, so again, hi, it's me. Um, hi, hello. Hi. Uh, oh, very nice. Yeah, to, in, in order to finish this report that you have to do for confessing your crimes, for stealing my precious bag, um, you have to tell us the location of the said Gorgon. Because she's going to kill me. That's like she's not nice about people snitching. She's in her gambling den under the city where she like has her little office or whatever. But the, you didn't hear it from me. You heard it from somebody else. Great. You didn't. You didn't hear it from me because you don't even know my name. Because my name is Casey, and I haven't told you. Shoot! All right, I did just tell you. Never well, mind. thanks for everything, Casey. Um, pleasure doing business with you. So, am I free to go now? Great. That sounds. Uh, business is done. Good. I can nope. just be on my way. <laughs> Grab them by the collar. Sure. Underneath the city gambling den. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, luckily, nobody here knows where to go to find that. So I don't think you're going to have any luck finding a gambling den under the city. So, ha! Huh. Wait, point of order. Um, I would probably know where an underground gambling den is. Oh, you 100% right? do, because you've actually <laughs> been in this gambling den before. Yeah, you 100% yeah. do. I'm not even going to make you make a history check because <laughs> you've been in this den on the show. So That's what I was going to say. I'm like, wait a minute. I definitely yeah. <laughs> know where this underground gambling den is. Casey is not good at her job. I think that's what has been very clear. <laughs> she has given you way more information no. than she ever should have because mm -hmm. I like role-playing that she failed this check. Um, mm -hmm. I am going to put a pin in this for now because we are running a little bit late uh, and we have some folks who are on the East Coast or are different markets so uh we with that information you know that the gorgon has hired someone to rob lysandros uh she accidentally stole from the wrong person uh but now we have piqued the interest of zindar at the mention of a gorgon and uh and callie you have realized that you have caught your bounty and uh and Marifine, you have possibly made some new friends although you seem to not want to admit that yet so we'll see where that goes <laughs> but we will end there tonight uh, that was an hour that I did not expect to have happen at all, but that's what's so fun <laughs> when a player gives me a cool dangling thing that I can play with. So uh, that was really fun. Thank you all for joining us for our first episode of the season. Uh, we're very excited that you were all here. I want to say again one more time, thank you to my new players. Uh, it was lovely having you at the table. I look forward to playing more with you as the season goes on. And uh, thank you to my returning players as well. I'm so happy to see your faces again. I've missed you both. Um, and with that out of the way, a couple of end of the show reminders that we have. I just want to make sure we don't have any more. We already got that toast. Okay. Make sure I had any lingering toast that I had to get to. Uh, Dom, did we get to the 250? Are we drawing the magic card tonight? Okay, we did not. So, all right. Uh, and then end of show reminders. Uh, we do have Albear Soup 
Owlbear Soup returning this Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific with a special guest. And, of course, Gen Con is coming up, so get your tickets now. Use the Gen Con uh, trigger in the chat to get info for that. And thank you all so much for joining us. And, uh, again, please do your best to support as many uh, streamers who are affected by a lot of the issues that have been happening these days. Uh, we, we definitely... We, we stand with our community, even if we have different philosophies on how to approach the, the issue. Uh, so thank you very much, and you all have a lovely night, and we will roll dice with you again soon. Oh, oh, uh, everyone tell people where they can find you. Sorry, I didn't oh. let you have your outro. <laughs> we already started <laughs> waving, though. You know? Yeah, I know. I, I realize. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like missing something. Oh, giving our, our, our lovely cast the ability <laughs> to say where we can find them. So let's start in the same order we did at the top of the show. Uh, Jordan, where can the folks find you? Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen. Um, you can find my, my former RPG performances on, on various other shows here in the channel, like, um, like Wild Cards and stuff like that. And I am a, uh, a writer on uh, the Command Zone YouTube channel. I do little advertisements and stuff for them. So if you ever check them out, I'm involved. All right. And they're amazing. Ashlyn, where can we find you, speaking of Command Zone? <laughs> Yes. Hello, everyone. I don't know if I'm lagging or if you can see me, but I'm Ashlyn Rose. Uh, you can find me on the... <laughs> oh, I, can, I can hear her. I can, I can hear, hear her. Ashlyn. Okay. <laughs> cool. Maybe you couldn't hear her, okay. Don, because you're talking over her. No, I'm kidding. Oh! <laughs> it was just a joke. It's just totally a joke. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm the Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on um, Twitter as Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And you can find me at my own website, ashlynrose.com, because I'm a voice actor and all my demos are there. And I can finally announce the thing I hinted at all of earlier this year because it finally released, which is uh, you can also hear me as Mara Mermaid for the Royal Enchantables, um, which is on YouTube. It's a uh, children's show and it's amazing and precious. So yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, Joy, say hello and tell the folks, I'll not say hello, but tell the folks where they can find you. You've already said hello. You've been here hello. for two hours. You can say <laughs> yes, you can find me at Curious Joy literally on every social media. Um, I'm mainly here on Twitch as much as I can, but if I'm not on Twitch, I am on Twitter talking of a whole bunch of random nonsense about Final Fantasy and stuff. <laughs> All right, and uh, Omega, take Very a nice. And yeah, and I am Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. You can find me everywhere at Critical Bard, blah, 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 Critical Bard across all social media channels. Uh, you might know me from uh, New Pants and Academia here on Saving Throw Show, where I am Kwame. Um, and, and oh, such such gay. Um, you also can find me um, many different places Fridays over on Tompo on twitch.tv slash rockpunch ATL. Uh, let's get wild mount on my channel on Saturdays. Uh, oh gosh, Dungeons and Durags on Sundays over on twitch.tv slash IMDG, Into the Mist on Realm Smith on Mondays, and I feel like there's one more thing and I can't think of it right now. But yeah, I do a lot. I do way too much. Uh, yeah, just support me in other things that I do, uh, including streaming as I'm a partner on Twitch doing hot mess stuff. That's me. And I am Riley Silverman. You can find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman and Instagram at Riley Silverman. And I have a big project being announced tomorrow that I'm very excited about, but we are not allowed to talk about it until tomorrow. So follow me on Twitter and I will drop the information tomorrow, which is very great. Uh, and uh, I think that's the biggest thing for me right now. So, oh, and uh, uh, Heartbeats, the show that I'm on for uh, for Ripley Improv is coming back September 17th. I believe that's the launch date of that. Friday, September 17th. So check that out on twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv. That'll be coming up soon. That is our improvised medical drama series that we do uh, where I play Dr. Ashley Love and I've been bumped up from two-time guest star to now I'm a series regular. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, and that is all as a reminder, like I said already, Albert Soup comes back this Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific, with special guest, and get those Gen Con tickets. Info is in the chats. Thank you all very much for supporting us tonight and you all have a great night and be safe.